Hi, this is Dr. Burns. My name is Dana Lankford. My name is Dr. Dominic Sportelli. And this is stuff no one, no one, no one talks about. It's gonna take a community to be able to address this issue. I personally dealt with suicide uh, ideations multiple times and I attempted suicide three times. And so when I was doing that, um, it wasn't from the aspect of I didn't want to be here anymore. It was more so the fact that I was in pain. A lot of times people don't want to talk about suicide because of the fact that they think, oh, if I bring it up, uh, it may put the idea in someone's head or you may uh, be pushing them towards that. But that's not the case. A lot of times you just need that permission to be able to divulge whatever you got going on with them. We have to share these particular stories that you see multiple people talking about, you know, I've been depressed or I didn't want to be here anymore. Or are you having people normalize these specific conversations? That's something that's going to go a long way because because people can resonate with these particular things because suicide may be passive. Somebody could be in a down moment and be like, I just wish something would take me out and I just don't want to be here anymore. It could be something just as simple as that. But then also understanding when you have these specific conversations, people can know where to go, who they can trust, but also build their support system around them. And that's what's going to take people a long way because you can't live life alone. You feel like you have no other option and you know and you feel like you don't want to be here anymore and you have a plan and intent to do to execute that particular plan you need to get help and that's not even just calling a friend or you know a family member it's also you know reaching out to your behavioral health center that or maybe even going to the hospital it's okay to go check into the, check yourself i've actually been in hospitals before um as a patient but then also as someone who's serving someone there so it's not a death sentence for you to go get that particular help. And then understand if you don't have a, any way out um, or if you have means to, you know, die by suicide, you know, get those things out of, out of your house or, you know, remove those those uh, things from your uh, periphery so you can, you know, be safe. But then also talk to someone you like, again, can't can't reiterate that enough um, is, you know, telling your supports, you know, what you have going on in your mind. Uh, what's going on in your head uh, but then also letting them know that you know if if I you know send a message and I need you to come Im immediately you know creating those those plans be preventive instead of reactive the way that I look at suicide intention or suicidal thinking that is the heart attack if I was a cardiologist meaning that's an emergency. In psychiatry, we have an old cliche saying, and it says that suicide is a permanent solution to a temporary problem. People often ask, why would somebody ever want to harm themselves? And there are lots of reasons for this, and every circumstance is unique. So in most cases, it's an escape. In a lot of cases, suicide feels to the individual that it's the only solution that they can come to to get rid of these uncomfortable emotions and circumstances in their lives. Another reason why somebody might consider hurting themselves is physical pain. Sometimes we see people that have significant chronic pain in their lives and they can't control it and it leads them to think down the lines of self-injury or suicide. There still is a mental health stigma. So people do still unfortunately perceive mental illness, whether it's depression or anxiety or something like bipolar disorder, they still think, wow, there's something wrong with me that's a character flaw. I shouldn't be experiencing this. No one will understand this. I can't talk to anybody about this. It sets up an environment where they don't feel understood, they feel isolated, they feel alone, and they feel as though they cannot get help. If you feel that someone might be feeling depressed or sad or suicidal, there are a couple things that you can do to help them. And I think most importantly, let them know that you care and that they're not alone. Because I'm telling you right now, probably a large reason why they feel the way they feel is because they feel isolated and misunderstood. So that will go a long way. When you do this, you wanna do it in a non-judgmental way, in a non-critical way. Reassure the individual that what they're going through is not permanent. 
And when you're in the midst of a storm, sometimes it's really, really hard to see your way out. So you need someone else who can see past that storm to guide you through that storm and get you to the sunlight on the other side. Don't be afraid to ask someone directly. Are you feeling like you wanna end your life? Do you have suicidal thoughts? Are you feeling suicidal? Do you have a plan to hurt yourself? We know in research that by asking these direct questions, you're more likely to engage in a productive conversation that can get this individual help. Things that you wanna avoid is saying things like, hey, cheer up, you'll be fine. Being dismissive of it can be a little challenging for somebody. Just changing the subject and not really engaging it can be be hard for the individual that's suffering with this. Even sometimes just trying to give advice the way you would handle it sometimes isn't the best way to do it. Anxiety sucks. It, it sucks. Like there is no two ways about it. You know, it's kind of hard to put into words exactly what it feels like. It can be really all consuming. I mean, it feels very hard at times to try to, you know, separate yourself from this all encompassing feeling that like everything is bad. For me, the difference between anxiety and depression is sort of um, the difference between the past and the future. Anxiety, in my experience, is all about what's going to happen. Depression, in my mind, has always been about ruminating on stuff in the past. You just sit there and you just keep thinking about it and thinking about it and thinking about it and thinking about it and it won't go away and it makes you feel terrible and you know you don't want to do anything because then you know it start you start to question you know well it's like well if I made these mistakes or whatever like am I am I worthwhile as a person. I cannot tell you how um, thankful I am um, that I, you know, spoke to a therapist. And I, I do think that just like having, having someone to talk to in like a structured sort of setting like that, where it's just like, you can just bleh, like kind of get all that stuff out of your head um, can be really helpful. So that would be my advice um, for anybody who, who maybe thinks that they, they're dealing with this, but doesn't know what to do next. When the suicide, my father, suicide happened, you know, I, it, you don't know that, I didn't know that I needed to talk to someone. I just didn't know. You know, my sister and I were in the room arguing about something, you know, yelling and screaming. And my mother came in quietly and said, uh, you know, Cecily, Courtney, you know, eventually it's just going to be you two. And the two of us looked at each other and just broke down. And we haven't had, my sister and I have been on the same page for the last 30 years plus years through my mother's passing from ALS. When you realize that life is sacred and every day it really is precious, that's one less day you have, then things become important. And that, that knowledge is what um, my mother gave me, the gift, the gift of you know, knowing how the life is about transitions. And I, I honor all the people that brought me to today. One of the things about, you know, Mommy, Mama uh, Vance also, is that not only did she say, you know, you and Cecily need to go back to your respective locations and find a therapist, but she said, I'm going to do it too. And it's so important because so often we know that adults say, do what I say, not what I do. And so Courtney's mother um, offered this foundation that it was okay and actually a necessity to pursue care. I mean, that's what we're here talking about, to pursue care. Which is what this book is about, the mental cost, the the, uh, the high cost for high living or low living. It's, there's a cost for everything. And I can be on top, as, as all, you know, that's what this book is about. You can be, from the outward appearance, I'm on top of the world, but inwardly, I'm dying. I'm struggling and I don't know how to find my way. Talking to someone is an option, an option that potentially can help. If you haven't in your lifetime been told that this is an option, 
by someone or have seen evidence of it, then someone coming to you or someone suggesting to you, talk to somebody, it's just so overwhelming with, well, how do you do it? Because that was my issue. Was, how do I do that? When you get in crisis, as, as we often do, if you don't have a team around you that, that has your back, when things get rough, that's not going to leave you nor forsake you, you and that can give you the advice to say court be quiet court don't say anything court straighten up your shirt that is what the 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 book is about i think to really uh let people know that it's okay men know but people in general know life is about the either you're in a in a uh, either in a, a, a crisis coming out of one or going into one and it doesn't mean that life is over. It just means that you're, this is the season that, that we're in. And, you know, I was in the season with my mom for four years. And we just had to, you know, day to day, ride it out, be, accept the new normal. It's a new normal. It just won't be, it, 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 this has come to pass. It's not gonna come to stay. It's gonna, it's gonna be, it's a season. And because there's some things in life that just take time. If you don't know what to do, sometimes you just gotta stand there and let things percolate and get ready for your next move.